So if you've ever needed to extract data from an XML file in UiPath, watch this video because I'll show you how to do it. So I am no XML black belt by any means, but from time to time, I also need to extract some data from an XML file. And every time I have to do it, I get in trouble. So I decided to make a video of how you can do some of the most basic things. I'm sure some of you might have other ways of doing it. And if you want to contribute, feel free to leave a comment in uh, the comments below. And also, if you have any questions, do the same. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, just go away. And if you like my channel, make sure you subscribe to it because then I'll know you're out there and that really does help my channel. So without any more delays, let's jump into Studio. So as always, we have an empty project and on my desktop, I have a couple of files. I have this customers XML file and then I have a customers to XML file. We'll get to that in a few minutes, but this customers XML file is very, very plain. It is simply an XML file that has some uh, elements in it. The root element is called customers. Then there's uh, a number of elements uh, inside of that. And then we have a number of customer elements, each with a number of fields or elements inside of them. So this is just a classic XML file, really. We want to try to get some data from it. And the first thing we want to do inside of UiPath Studio is we want to read the file as a text file. So I'll go to uh, my activities pane and search for read text file. Add that, and I'll point to the file on my desktop, customers XML. And that uh, will yield then an output in the form of a string. I will create a new variable for that, my text simply. And now we have uh, the contents of the file in a string variable. The next thing we want to do is we want to deserialize this string into an object. And we do that with an activity that's simply called deserialize XML. We'll drag that in. And we will provide the my text string as the input for it. And then as the output variable, we'll create one called my XML. So now we have two variables. We have the my text string variable that contains the contents of the file as a string. And then we have the my XML uh, variable, which is an X document, which is then an object representation of that string. So now we can start working with the my XML object. So if we look at the XML again, the first thing we want to try to extract is simply this last updated element from the customers element. So in order to do that, what we do is we will simply go in here and we will we'll, we'll do a message box. Add that to our sequence. And what I will put inside of the text here is my XML dot element. And then we'll give it the name of the root element that is customers. And then we'll look for an element inside of that. And that was called last updated and then get the value of that element. So that's basically how you do it. You work through sort of the hierarchy that is inside of the XML file to find the element and then ask for the value of that element. So we'll save it and we'll try to run it and see what happens. And sure enough, in the message box, it says 2024-09-09, the same value as we had inside of our XML document. So that's a good start. So what if we wanted to dig a little bit deeper and then maybe get, for example, the name here of the first customer? Well, more or less, we would do the same thing. We would modify our expression here and then we would simply say customer dot element name dot value. Save that, run it. And now we get John Doe. And we only get one John Doe because we only get the first element that we find. The next thing we want to do is we want to select multiple elements. So the way we can do that is by creating another variable. And we'll do that down here in our variables pane. We will call this all customers. And this is by default a string variable. We don't need that. We need something called an I enumerable of X element. X element is the type of object you get when you find an element inside of an XML file and we want to get more of those. So we will go into the uh, type picker here 
and we will search for I enumerable and then brackets T. And then we'll get uh, the option to select this thing in here. And then we need to select in this drop down list what is the type of object or what is the class uh, that we want a number of instances of. Gets a little, yeah, that's just how it is. So we'll just select the system.xml.link.x element class. And now when we click OK, we now have. If I just resize these things, we now have an I enumerable of X element in short. That means if we get more elements from our XML file, we now have a place to store those elements in. And the way we get those elements, um, we'll do an assign here. So I'll drag in an assign activity, and then I'll say all customers is going to be, and I'll go into the advanced editor here. It's going to be the my x, not my text, my XML. And then we'll want to get the descendants. And that means you get all of the, well, descendant elements inside of the XML file that has a certain name. And in our case, it's going to be those that are of the name customer, not customers, but customer. Um, and that's it really. When we click save, we can see that everything is, is good. And we can now do a message box, for example, where we simply display the count property of the all customers I enumerable variable. So um, if I remember correctly from the file, we have one, two, three customers. So when I run this, hopefully we'll first get, yeah, we'll get the John Doe in the first message box. And then in the next message box, hopefully it's going to say three. Let's try and run it and see what happens. We get John Doe because that's the name of the first customer. Then we get three. So I guess this is kind of cool. If we wanted to make it just a little bit more complicated, what we could do instead of selecting all of the customers, let's say we wanted to get into uh, a situation where we wanted to select only the customers where, for example, the state was New York as in this middle element for Jane Smith. What we can do then is we can go into our expression editor here and then say we have the descendants customer, but we want to select on those and we can do a where, then we can do what's called a Lambda function. And basically what we do here is we, if I can type, we define that on this type of uh, element, we want the sub element that is called address that has a sub element called state that has a value that is equal to New York. And if we do this, Oh, I need to correct a spelling mistake here. If we do this, then instead of getting a count of three, when we do our count of the customers down here, what we get here is we should hopefully just get one because we've only selected that one customer that has New York as its state. Now, one thing I want to show you, just one very quick thing is a lot of times when you have an XML file, Let's try and open the other one that I have in my desktop. They have what's called a namespace attached to the root element. Uh, it's just an identifier of uh, sort of this uh, schema for an XML document. And if your XML document does have a namespace, then you need to take that into account when you're selecting from all of the uh, different elements. And the way you do that, well, let's jump into Studio real quick and have a look at that again. And I'm just going to delete some of this more complex stuff down here. So we just select uh, the uh, customer name from the first customer that was John Doe. What you want to do is you want to uh, declare a variable. We'll just call it my name space or my NS. And for the type, we want it to be
a namespace, system.xml.link.namespace. And the way you then um, assign something to this variable, well, you just use a normal assign activity. And we want to do it, of course, below the deserialization. And then we want to add it to the my ns variable. And what you do is simply you say my XML root name namespace. Now we have a namespace object here. And then inside of the message box, if we just run it without doing anything, this is not going to work. I'll show you just in a second. Well, it does work because I'm still selecting from that same uh, customers XML file. We want to use the customers to XML file, run that again. And now we can see it, it doesn't work. It cannot find the elements because then inside of your uh, expression, you need to add for each element that you select, you need to add my NS plus customers. And then over here in the element, you need to add my NS plus customer. And over here for the name, you need to add my NS plus name. And now if we save it and run it again, hopefully we should get John Doe as we did before. So this whole namespace thing, this has freaked me out a number of times because I don't work with XML documents as, a, as such uh, very often. But when I do, I always forget this namespace part. And maybe you know a, a better or smarter way of doing this. We could also, instead of using these uh, Lambda expressions, we could use um, link in our uh, expression editor. Um, I chose not to in this example, but uh, hopefully you liked the video. If you did, thumbs up. Thumbs ups are important. Hit the notification bell so you'll know when I put out new videos. That happens now about once a week, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, but I hope you enjoyed this one and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.